Hey, good morning, everyone. Today we're going to learn about how we can charge an object by contact. And it is exactly what it sounds like. It's probably the easiest of the three methods because it just means that a charged object, when touching another object, there will be a transfer of charge. So let's take a look at the, vi at the video again. So yesterday we saw that there is an electroscope called a hanging pith ball. You see that in the screen here. It's just a styrofoam ball. And again, I've got this plastic rod. And as we expect, if both objects are neutral, which they are right now, equal amounts of positive and negative charge, nothing appears to happen when I bring the rod close to the pith ball. Now I'm gonna give the plastic rod a charge through friction. So same as last lesson, uh, I'm rubbing some animal fur on the plastic rod. The plastic rod is ripping electrons off of the animal fur. It's getting charged through friction and picking up an overall negative charge. Now that the rod has a charge, we should see that we, when we bring it close to the pith ball, there is now a force of attraction. And there you can see, again, by bringing the rod close, we saw this in the last video, obviously there's an invisible force of attraction here because the rod is now charged to attracting the pith ball. This time, I'm gonna let the pith ball touch the rod. I want it to touch the rod. There we go, see really quick, all it did was touch the rod, but the very act of touching it meant there was now charging by contact. As soon as the pith ball touched the rod, there was an electron transfer from the rod into the pith ball. So the pith ball has now picked up negative charge. So if the rod's negatively charged and the pith ball is now negatively charged, we know that like charges repel, there should be a force of repulsion. And sure enough, you can see as I bring the rod close, not even that close, it's pushing the pith ball away. Okay. So before it was attracted because the pith ball had no overall charge, but as soon as it touched it, electrons moved from the rod into the pith ball. That was charging by contact. Now that they both have a negative charge, you can see right here very clearly, okay, there's a force of repulsion. Okay. So that is charging by contact, fairly straightforward. We just want to remind you that whenever we're talking about charging by contact or the movement of charge, we always talk about the movement of electrons. So with my rod being negative, when it touches the ball, we say that electrons move from the rod into the ball. If I replace the rod with a glass one and gave it a positive charge, such as you see in this diagram here from the textbook, if a positive rod touches the ball, then we say that electrons move from the ball into the rod. You do not say that protons move from the rod into the ball because the protons are locked in the nucleus. So that's not what's happening. It's only a movement of electrons. And the more easily that electrons can move through a material, the more we classify it as something called a conductor. So again, they talk about that down here for you to read through. Conductors, materials with easily movable electrons and insulators, materials with not. So that's charging by contact, probably the easiest of the three. And we'll move on to charging by induction next.